Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, just want to quickly say that I'm sorry for not getting out a lot of videos to you guys lately. I've been going through a lot of personal stuff outside of YouTube, but I promise I'll be ramping up videos very soon. Just please try to hang in there and thank you for all the support. It means a lot to me. But uh, with that said, in today's video, we're going to be talking about Warren Buffett. And before we start, I just want to quickly remind you guys that Warren Buffett is one of my personal idols. I have a huge amount of respect for Buffett, and to this day, I still implement a lot of his investing principles into my long-term investing strategy. However, Buffett's performance in recent history has been very disappointing to say the least, and the fact that he was actually a net seller of stocks during the 2020 stock market crash is pretty mind-blowing because it completely contradicts his uh, one of his most famous principles, which is to be greedy when others are fearful. Well, in today's video, we're going to examine how Buffett handled this 2020 crash, and I'll give my opinion on whether I think that his actions were justified or if I'm starting to agree with some of the analysts that are actually coming out now and saying that they no longer feel that Warren Buffett is a good investor in today's market. Pretty interesting stuff. So uh, we're going to talk about all of that in today's video. It should be a fun one. I hope you guys enjoy it, but we got a lot to cover. So let's just go ahead and dive straight into this. Okay. So going into the year, Berkshire Hathaway, which of course is Buffett's investing conglomerate company that owns a bunch of other companies like Geico, Fruit of the Loom, and Dairy Queen, but also invests heavily in public stocks that they don't fully own. Uh, like for example, Coca-Cola, Apple, and tons of banks. Uh, they were sitting on a hundred $130 billion in cash, which is a you know, huge amount, as Buffett and his right-hand man, Charlie Munger, stuck to primarily bank and insurance companies and were not really willing to take risks by making some big acquisitions or investing in high-growth tech stocks that were too difficult for the aging legends to understand. More on that later. But uh, these are moves that ultimately led to Berkshire Hathaway struggling to even outperform the broader market, coming in at uh, about 10 percentage points lower than the S&P 500 over the past decade, with 2019 being their most underperforming year over that time, as their stock climbed by only 11%, while the S&P 500 gained nearly three times that amount at almost 30%. Don't get me wrong, they still performed well, but if you had just invested in the broader market, which takes like literally no time, no research, no brain power to do, you would have actually made more money and, you know, significantly more money while also taking significantly less risk as a broader market is generally considered the safer choice compared to individual stocks. And I know what you're thinking, but Buffett's strategy shines during down markets and crashes, right? Well, don't worry, we're, we're actually going to take a closer look at that argument in just a second. But uh, to make matters worse, last year also marked the third straight year that Buffett was unable to close a major acquisition, despite sitting on, of course, so much cash, which led to investors in the company losing patience and becoming agitated with Buffett refusing to make any moves, to which Buffett fired back in his annual letter to shareholders, saying that prices are just too expensive to make any major acquisitions at this time. And hey, I actually agree with him because at that time, the stock market was in fact trading at record highs, so it correlates with Buffett's other motto of being fearful when others are greedy, which is what was going on at that time. However, the problem that I have is that in that letter, Buffett also said that in the years ahead, they will try to use a lot of their liquidity to purchase companies that they will permanently own, even going as far as to say that they'd love to make an elephant size purchase. So given how heavily the stock market crashed this year, you would think that they'd at least buy something, right? I mean, they literally had enough cash to afford completely buying from over 450 different companies in the S&P 500, 80 in the uh, NASDAQ 100, and 11 in the Dow 30, including giant companies like McDonald's, Tesla, Starbucks, or even Boeing. I mean, imagine the kind of returns that they would have seen if they had purchased something like Tesla when it was trading at around $300 this year. Uh, the stock is now trading insanely higher at almost $1,000. And I know that Tesla may not have been a realistic option because of uh, you know, Warren Buffett's age and how hard it is to understand tech stocks and how risky maybe something like that would have seemed to them at that time. But again, with so much cash, I mean, you would think that they, they would have at least bought something. In fact, when looking at that stock market crash, the Dow Jones had fallen massively by close to 40%, while the S&P 500 also crashed by over 
35%, which by the way, was also the fastest stock market crash in history with the ones uh, in second, third and fourth place all occurring during the Great Depression. How crazy is that? So naturally, Warren Buffett went shopping and was super greedy while everyone else was being extremely fearful and thinking that the world was ending, right? Well, not so much. So ironically, leading up to the crash, Buffett was still buying stocks, including ETFs that tracked the S&P 500. And even as the market first initially started going down, reports came out that Buffett had even added more to his Delta Airlines position in the amount of close to a million shares worth over $45 million for an average share price of around $46 a share, which amounted to Buffett owning more than 10% of not just uh, Delta, but also American Airlines, United Airlines, and also Southwest Airlines. Well, of course, airlines proceeded to crash even more after that, with Delta falling all the way down to just $17 a share, less than half the price that Warren Buffett had paid for it literally only a few weeks uh, ago. Of course, in this scenario, you would absolutely expect Buffett to go out and do what he's always preached, which is to buy more of the stock as it goes down. In fact, just a month prior, he was literally quoted in saying that investors should want the stock market to go down. Well, Buffett's wish was granted as the market crashed and Delta stock got destroyed, but what did Buffett do? He actually sold all of it for a huge loss. And not just the new shares that he had just bought, but he literally sold his entire position in Delta for around $22 a share, on which he had a cost basis of around $44 a share. So that was a loss of around 50% that he took on just that one sale. And by the way, it wasn't just Delta that he sold. He literally sold all of the other airlines he owned as well, including American for around a 75% loss, United for around a 50% loss, and Southwest for around a 30% loss, saying that he had been wrong to invest in the airline industry. And it doesn't just stop with airline stocks. In the first quarter, Buffett sold shares of another 17 different stocks and continued that selling into April, where he was also a net seller of stocks as well as Berkshire Hathaway grew their cash pile to almost $140 billion. Of course, that led to many analysts criticizing him for not taking advantage of the market crash by buying stocks, repurchasing their own shares, making acquisitions, or even working out any lucrative bailout deals with companies that needed extra help. One such analyst from the Financial Times is quoted in saying, I am nervous that Buffett may have missed this whole rally. That's frustrating. A lot of retail investors were plowing money into the market and doing better than professional investors. Investors, I think you can include Buffett in that. And yeah, he's absolutely right. From the March lows, the S&P 500 had climbed by over 46% at one point and is still up by over 37%, while this airline ETF had soared from just $11 a share to about double that amount at $22 a share and is still hovering above $16 right now, which is still over a 40% increase. So clearly Buffett could have made a ton of money if he would have just bought into the fear, which is what a lot of other people did, including myself, or he could have at least held on to some of those positions and waited for a later recovery before selling out of them to at least break even or only lose a small amount of money. So why didn't he? I mean, this doesn't sound like Buffett at all, right? Uh, what caused him to stray so far away from his long-term investing strategy this year that uh, ended up causing him to perform so horrendously bad and actually lose money while so many others were actually making money? What was his reasoning for doing that? Well, for starters, Buffett explained in his annual meeting that the global health issue had just too much uncertainty in terms of scale, duration, and ultimate costs on everything, and that seemed to have caused him to freeze and opt for taking a wait-and-see approach rather than jumping on the deals like he would normally be expected to. In fact, his right-hand man, Charlie Munger, defended the decisions to avoid buying stocks and instead keep liquidity as he was quoted in saying, well, I would say basically we're like the captain of a ship when the worst typhoon that's ever happened comes. We just want to get through the typhoon and we'd rather come out of it with a whole lot of liquidity. We're not playing, oh, goody, goody, everything's going to hell. Let's plunge 100% of the reserves into businesses. Warren wants to keep Berkshire safe for people who have 90% of their net worth invested in it. We're always going to be on the safe side. That doesn't mean we couldn't do something pretty aggressive or seize some opportunity, but basically we will be fairly conservative. 
and will emerge on the other side very strong. And hey, that's a fair point. Going through a depression-like economy when you're a conglomerate that owns a bunch of businesses that will obviously struggle with huge losses is not an easy thing to do. And during times like these, keeping as much liquidity as possible can be very important to make sure your businesses don't go under when so many people rely and depend on them. Not to mention that Berkshire Hathaway is definitely, I would say, more heavily invested in by older folks as opposed to something like millennial investors that care more about exciting businesses with a lot of future growth potential. Uh, I think Berkshire Hathaway is a slow, kind of slower moving business, but definitely a very profitable one, would attract more retirees, maybe with shorter time horizons. And so the name of the game for them would be wealth preservation as opposed to future growth. And so from those standpoints, I could understand why Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett would want to make some of the moves that they made to ensure that they keep that wealth preservation for their uh, older investors. But at the same time, I just personally hate this strategy because I think it really means that we're in for a lackluster future for Berkshire Hathaway if they continue to go this route. And it also means that Berkshire, uh, I'm sorry, Warren Buffett, in my opinion, has really lost his touch as an investor. And I'll give you several reasons why I think this. Now, on one hand, you could definitely argue that uh, Warren Buffett might be thinking that the economy is going to get worse, that we might have another crash coming, you know, sort of coming out of this. And so he wants to keep up as much liquidity as possible to take advantage of any kind of downturn that we run into going forward. And then they can make some big acquisitions and, and, uh, and buy some stocks at some great prices. However, there's only one big problem with that. And that is that the market has already crashed this year and Warren Buffett didn't do a damn thing about it. So why should we now believe that he will be kind of uh, courageous enough or brave enough to be making some deals and some moves if the market was to go lower here in kind of this short to medium term? Obviously, Warren Buffett is a pretty old guy, so we would be looking for some volatility here in the short term. And that's not to say that we won't have any because this is an election year after all, and the economy is still very heavily destroyed right now. So, and by the way, the stock market has been kind of dipping now. So uh, we could definitely see the market go down, but my my point is that we already had the market go down and he didn't do anything about it. So why why would we now believe that the second time around that he would be brave enough to make some moves? That's kind of my point. And even if they're looking to use that liquidity just for their own businesses to make sure that they don't go under, which obviously makes sense when you're, when you're talking about wealth preservation and business preservation, uh, they would be using that liquidity to make sure they all stay afloat within the big you know, Berkshire Hathaway umbrella. Uh, but even in that scenario, you would be using that liquidity. So your liquidity would be going down and you'd be doing nothing for future growth. So liquidity is dropping. There's no future growth. That just means like a mediocre future, in my opinion. That doesn't mean that they won't still be successful and perform relatively well. But in terms of them, you know, vastly outperforming the market, I'm just not sure I see that happening. And if they don't make changes here, if they're always going to be afraid to be buying companies and stocks during a market crash, then that means that the only times when they will actually be out there buying might be when the market is kind of flat or when things are going up and the economy is strong. But during those times, valuations are also going to be high. There's not going to be a lot of great deals out there. So I just don't think you're going to be you're going to be seeing them buy a lot of exciting companies at some great prices uh, like they could have during, for example, this last crash where they could have literally bought Tesla in cash. I mean, that's just insane. And I'm not saying that they had to buy Tesla, but they could have at least made some kind of move. And speaking of Tesla, that's actually another criticism that a lot of investors and analysts have had about Warren Buffett is that he's just too old at this point to be understanding some of these new exciting tech companies and is therefore unwilling to invest in them. And that really leaves Berkshire Hathaway missing it, missing out on some great uh, companies and stocks out there. To quote billionaire investor Ken Fisher, Buffett didn't capitalize on this market sell-off because of his advanced age, which he claims tends to cause great investors to lose their edge once they reach a certain age as they become relatively static during a crisis. Another criticism came from the investment chief of Jay Stern, who brought up the various mistakes Buffett has made over the years, like missing out on buying Amazon sooner because they consider those companies to be too hard to understand, but 
meanwhile having invested in large failures like Kraft Heinz, Occidental Petroleum, and of course the four largest airlines in America, which they proceeded to sell for huge losses. And I completely agree with that criticism because I did always feel that Amazon was one of the most obvious stocks to buy for a long time, and I couldn't understand why so many people ignored it. I actually remember receiving a ton of angry comments from people when I was buying it at less than $1,000, calling me an idiot and someone who didn't understand stocks, and yet the stock has recently traded for only a couple of a couple hundred dollars short of around 3000 I will however note a few caveats in Buffett's defense though, because one of the big reasons why Buffett didn't make any big moves this year was because Washington and the Fed had pumped so much money into the market and still continue to do so, that they've basically ensured many companies can't go under and that's made it a lot harder for Buffett to find desperate companies willing to make lucrative deals in exchange for a bailout. And I think that was a big reason why Buffett has been so hesitant to make any large acquisitions. This doesn't, however, excuse his unwillingness to buy more stocks that were clearly trading at great prices, especially tech stocks that soared off the bottoms, as is evident in the tech-heavy NASDAQ index, skyrocketing by over 50% to set a new record high this year. Yet, as of the last quarter, the only real tech tech stocks in Buffett's top 10 holdings were Apple and Sirius XM, while the rest were all pretty much banks and grocery and automotive related. Not very exciting companies in today's world that is so heavily focused on innovation and growth, but his portfolio doesn't have much of that at all. And that, coupled with the negativity and criticism that we've been talking about, is the reason why Berkshire Hathaway stock is still down over 20% this year and hasn't really recovered a whole lot from the March lows. So is Warren Buffett still a good investor? Well, in my opinion, I would say, well, there's okay, for sure there's definitely some good arguments to be made on both sides, but in my opinion, I do still think that he's a good investor. I do still think that he's as wise as he's ever been. I just think he's a different type of investor uh, in today's market because, and again, I don't say this in an insulting way, but I do feel that his age has caught up with him to the point where I just don't think that he really understands tech stocks and I think that's probably one of the biggest problems for him because I think that's where a lot of the opportunities lie in today's world that is so uh, technology focused and I think that's only going to become more so the case into the future. I think we're only going to become more and more advanced as a society, as a, as a world and, uh, and, and so I think that Warren Buffett for his age not being able to understand some of those companies tends to fall back to areas where he feels a lot more comfortable like finance and, and banking and insurance and consumer staples and other legacy types of businesses like older you know car manufacturers like GM or you know oil companies as well things like that and look that's fine I, I'm personally not a big fan of some of those areas uh, I like to invest heavily in tech stocks so obviously I would kind of disagree with him here and I think he just has more of a um, I would say wealth preservation approach at this point and that's fine look these are some scary times that we're going through in the economy you know there's a lot of chaos especially you know here in the United States there's been a lot of chaos uh, out on the streets and everything and again this is an election year who knows how this year plays out who knows how it goes going into next year and of course with the global health issue so there's so many different things so many different factors I can understand why being hesitant this is definitely 2020 is for sure the scariest year that I think I've ever lived through. I, I can't really think of another year where it was uh, this bad, in my opinion, uh, just in the kind of general sense. It's very mentally draining as well. I don't know. There's a lot of things we could talk about. So I could understand why he would take that kind of safer, more cautious approach. But uh, I, I do think that that is going to ultimately leave him underperforming compared to others who are willing to take more risks when opportunities arise. So if we do happen to have another stock market crash or things continue to go down, which is very possible, uh, we'll have to see if Buffett actually comes out and finally starts making some moves. I think Berkshire Hathaway is going to have to rely more heavily on the younger staff that, that, that he's got on there, Todd and Ted, I think. Um, these younger investors who are more familiarized with technology. Remember, uh, the person who bought Amazon stock wasn't actually Warren Buffett. It was either, I think, Ted or Todd uh, that worked for him in Berkshire Hathaway. So I think that's where the future of Berkshire Hathaway lies. And hey, they've got plenty of liquidity to make some moves. I just don't think those moves are going to be made by 
Warren Buffett. I think he's going to generally be taking the more cautious approach. But hey, uh, we'll have to just keep an eye on it and see what happens. So uh, let me know if you guys are invested in Berkshire Hathaway stock, if you like it, what do you think about Warren Buffett? I'm personally not a shareholder and uh, I still really like Warren Buffett. I will always hear everything he has to say, but uh, I don't have to agree with everything that he does. And I think that's you know definitely the case with how he approached the 2020 stock market crash, as opposed to how I approached it and maybe a lot of other people did as well. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one very soon. Take care, stay safe out there. Bye-bye.